it is Sunday morning. We're ready to worship. We're ready to praise this morning. So go ahead, come on, gather in, share this on your feed, start a watch party because we're ready this morning. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Yes. This one thing I'm asking. to worship you, God. And like the song says, Lord, we can't get enough of you, God. Enough of your spirit, God. Enough of your presence, Lord. Because you're a wonderful Lord. You're a mighty God. You're a beautiful Lord. God, and we praise your name this morning. We worship your holy name, God. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Beautiful name it is. Nothing compares 
to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus is. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name. Jesus, we call you Jesus. 
and you alone be glorified and praised and you alone be honored and adored and you alone be glorified and praised worship you. Yes. We magnify you right now. Oh, yes. oh Jesus, we love you. you Lord. We praise you. Sing that again so yes. beautiful. Mm. He's so wonderful. He's so beautiful. He's so kind, He's so kind and lovely. Isn't he? Isn't he? Come on, that's not a Isn't question. He? That's a statement. He's everything you need Beyond right now. Compared Come on, just reach out to him to wherever you're at right now. Marvelous and holy. Marvelous and holy. Isn't just he? Just one more time. Isn't he? He's so wonderful. Come on, let him be wonderful. He's so beautiful. Right now in your life. In your He's marriage, so in your home, in your finances. Whatever you need God Isn't to be right now, He can be that. And so much more if you would just trust Him. Just lean into God right now. Come on, just lean into God right now. Come on, just lean into God right now. Isn't He? Isn't He? He's so today from Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7 says this, do not be anxious about anything. I wonder if you've got some things on your mind and on your heart weighing you down today. It says, but in every situation instead by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, 
Present your request to God. And I love this verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all your understanding, will do what? It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Come on, what are we to do? Not to be anxious. Trust God. Pray about everything. Come to God with thanksgiving in our hearts and the peace of God. I know you need some peace right now. And Jesus is that peace. And He transcends our thoughts, what we could even imagine. And He goes so far beyond. Wherever you're at, reach out. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, right now for your peace just to flood every home, every heart, every vehicle, every place that someone is watching right now. God, I pray that that person that's tuned in today is not by mistake, but God, your peace is flooding them right now. You're giving hope to a hopeless situation, to a marriage that's failing. God, you're that reconciliation to finances that are gone. God, you're that miracle, God, that can happen. To that body that's sick, you're that miracle of healing and strength. To the person who's broken and destitute, come on, you're their victory, you're their way of escape. To those who are drug addicts and strung out, come on, God, you'll sober them up. You'll change their lives and you'll deliver them. Why? Because that's the God that you are. Go beyond everything we could even imagine, God, and just be that great God. In Jesus' name, wherever you're at, shout amen. Amen. Welcome home to Encounter Church, a place of life, love, and purpose. We're so glad that you stepped in today to our online service. And we want to say welcome home to each and every one of you. I know a lot of you were hoping we would have church as normal and we would be back in the building. Come on, the the ban has been lifted. We can go and do. Listen, there's still a lot of things that we need to work through. And trust me, we're working through those. And make sure you fill out that survey so you can just let us know your thoughts and feelings moving forward. And we're doing everything that we can to make room. In fact, walls are coming out in the church. Physical walls are coming down in the church to create more space for our social distancing and just all those regulations. We're doing everything that we can to accommodate our people. But until then, we're still having church. And we're still being the church. So reach out to everyone. And I hope you're sharing this post and and this live feed and a part of it. YouTube too. Go on there. It's Encounter Church BR right there and you can find us. But listen, welcome home each and every one of you. We're glad that you tuned in. Check out the announcements and we'll be right back with the message. Thank you again for joining us on this Sunday for our church online. I know church, we want to be back together physically, but for right now, we're still able to have church and that's the most important thing. And we're so glad that you tuned in with us. And this is the time of the service where we can honor God with our giving. We call that our tithe. And that's important because that's our first that we bring back to God. And here's the promise. When we give him first, he'll redeem the rest. What does that mean, Pastor? 100% without God's blessing is not going to go as far as 90% supernaturally blessed by God as we give God the portion. And again in Malachi, he says, put me to the test. I've tested God in this and I have a testimony. And those of you out there who are tithers, you know that testimony that God will come through every time supernaturally. That means you can't figure it out on a calculator. That's natural. But supernaturally. He works as we're faithful to give. There's four ways that you can give. They're on the screen. You can see that. Some people are loving the cash app. It's an easy way to be able to do that. But just make sure that you give. And again, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for your faithfulness to give. And it's going into building the church, into reaching our communities. Exciting things. Come on. Exciting things are taking place. So again, stay connected. Get in a group. Do whatever you can. And I hope you filled out that survey. Get that survey back into us just to help direct us and lead us the next steps that we need to take as a church. We love you. Enjoy the message. Wow, guys, it's hard to believe that we are entering into week five of our stressed out series. And again, God knew what he was doing when we planned this at the beginning of the year. Why? Because yes, many of us are stressed out. We know that. But God wants to get the stress out of our lives so we can find freedom, so we can find peace. And I want to pray for you right now. You know what to do. Put your hand on your heart. We're going to pray right now that God would touch us and move in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, for the privilege that we have today, wherever we may be, to come into your presence, because wherever we are, your presence is there. 
And God, I pray right now that you would touch each and every one of us. God, we would not leave this time, this service, the same way in which we came. But God, we would be changed and transformed and renewed in every way. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. In Jesus' name. Come on, wherever you're at, high five someone. Say, what up? Looks like you're losing some weight. Someone told me that last week. They said, wow, you look like you're losing some weight. I was like, thank you. That's the best thing that you could probably ever say. But come on, I want to again today give you some biblical principles and truths that I really believe work when they're applied. We can, we can put a scripture up on the wall and say, well, why is it not working? It's not meant to be on the wall. It's meant to be in our feet, in our hands, in our mouths. It's meant to be walked out and lived out. And also, it's not something that we can say, well, I tried that once. It's something that we need to consistently apply to our lives. You see, there's two ways that we can live in our life, God's way or our way. Come on, and there's only one way of success. And can I tell you which one that is? God's. It's not ours. It's not our way. But it's amazing how we have the tendency and the bias to always resort back to our way of living, our way of thinking, our way of doing. And so here's my first thought today. We've got to guard against that. Why? Because if we do not, we're going to be preparing for problems. If we're going back to our way and and the things that don't work, we're going to be preparing our lives for problems. And I don't want problems in your life. We want solutions from God's Word. And usually I would recap right now and say, okay, this is week five, week one, two, three, four, five. This is what we've done. And by the way, I will say this. My wife did an incredible job last week. What a great discussion that's been in our small groups this week. And if you're not a part of a group, get in those. But, you know, we've got so much to cover today. And really what we're covering is top of the the list. The number one stressor in each and every one of our lives, drum roll, here it is, the leading cause of stress in our lives is financial. It's our finances. Come on, it's financial stress. And in most cases, it's more money than month or more month than money rather. And again, what a timely message for our current climate conditions and situations, because here's what I've discovered. Most people aren't stingy. There are, there are some who are stingy no matter what. But most people aren't stingy. They just have bad money management that leaves them strapped. Personal finance is more about the personal than it is the finance. And I believe as Christians, we should have a heart of generosity. And many people want to be so generous, but they don't have the ability because of bad decisions and choices that they have made in their lives. So today, my goal, our goal as a church each and every week is to get you out from under the stress of finances and to give you some help. So here's our theme verse that we've been um, dealing with every week. And it's Luke 21 and verse 34. And it says, but watch yourselves lest your hearts become weighed down. Again, a picture of anxiety and stress, the weights of life. We see that all around us. People weighed down with the cares and concerns of life. And here they are. We can be weighed down with dissipation. That's a big word that means slowly evaporating away. Little by little, we don't see it, but over the course of time, much can happen. With drunkenness, there can be literal drunkenness, and that's not good. You don't need to do that. But it's also symbolic of the person that would say, you know what, I'm going to do whatever I want, how I want it. That's the thought right there. And it says, and also the cares of life. We can all have a big list for that one. And then that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. It's those days, remember, when we say, what happened? How did I get it? Bam, it just happens. It comes suddenly, but it's not really suddenly. It's day by day. We're allowing our hearts, our lives to be burdened down, weighed down with the cares of this world. So how do we get rid of such a financial situation? Or really, how did we even get in such a financial situation? And I'm so glad that the Bible is very vocal when it comes to financial matters. And I've said this before, if you were paying attention, there are actually more verses in the Bible than verses about heaven and hell combined. There are over 2,500 verses to do with finance. In fact, 16 of the parables that Jesus told had to do with finance. Why was that? Because Jesus knew one of the greatest struggles we would face in our life is the stress of finance. 
So way back then, he spoke into our situation, knowing that we would need this right now. And I'm actually going to talk from one of those parables today. And I believe this parable paints such an accurate picture of how wrong thinking can financially destroy our lives, but it also will give us the solution in the end. So stay with me. This is the, par- uh, the parable of the prodigal son, the lost son. And we see this in Luke chapter 15. And actually in Luke chapter 15, we see three things that were lost. We see a sheep, we see a coin, and a son. And one day I asked God, why were they lost? Because I think that's a good question to know. Why were they lost? And here's why I believe they were lost. The sheep was lost because it didn't hear the voice of the shepherd. John 10 tells us the sheep hear my voice and follow. So obviously the sheep had wandered far enough away that it did not hear the instruction of the shepherd. We can do that in our lives. The coin was lost for what reason? It was in the neglect of the owner. If we don't watch, there can be neglect in our life and that will cause loss every time. And then we see the lost son. And why was he lost? Because of decisions. And it started with a decision that began a great problem. There's always got to be a starting point. And look what it says in Luke chapter 15, beginning in verse 11 and 12. And it said, Jesus continued. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the youngest said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Give me. That was actually an incredible insult in Jewish custom of that day. To say, I want my money before you were dead. That was such a disrespect to his dad. Even today, it's pretty disrespectful to say to your parents, give me your money. Basically saying, I wished you were dead because I want what will be mine when you are gone. And I heard this from Pastor Chris Hodges, and I love this statement. Look at this. God will give you what you ask for, even if it's not the right thing, because he will let you go your own way to find out that's not the way to go. That's powerful right there. It didn't say that's what God wants for your life, because that's not. But God will allow us to go those ways and and to see and to learn quickly. And how often do we think we know the best for our lives to find out it's not really as best and as good as we thought it was? So our lives are stressed out. Let me give you five ways our lives are stressed out. Number one, when we consume or we are consumed with having more. What did he say? Give me. I want more. Let me have more. In week one, we talked actually about more. In Ecclesiastes, it says one handful. It's better to have one handful with tranquility than both handfuls with strife. And how we're to live a one handful life so we've got room to be able to receive more in our lives. But guess what? We convince ourselves that's not the life that we live because we want some more. We want more and we want more and we want more. And here's how it sounds. If I just had that, then. Come on, we say that over and over again. If I could just have that job, then. If I could just have that car, if I could just have that house, if I could just have that girl or guy, if I could just get that thing, then. Then what? Then you would want something else. Because that thing, that thing's a moving line. It's a moving target. You'll never get that because when you get that, there's another that. Then. That then. That then. And the next thing you know, and you're chasing, 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 chasing. Convinced that there's always more. Read on, verse 13. It doesn't take long. It says, not long after that, the young son got all that he had together. And he set off for a distant country. He set off. He's left. Come on, he he wants it all now. You see, the next stress that we find in our lives, come on, our lives are stressed out. Why? Because we want everything now. Give it to me right now. I want it immediately. Come on, we want things right now. We're such an instant society today. Stick it in the microwave, nuke it. That's how we want our lives. We want it in 15 seconds. If we're waiting longer, we're like, what's up? We're such a now-driven thing. And let me talk to all our young people right now. Be careful the tendency that you have is you want it all now. I can't wait till I leave the house. I can't wait till I go to college. I can't wait to do all this. And, And then what? Then what? Come on, you may think it's all awesome, but then it's going to be on your bill. It's going to cost you something. And a lot of times it's going to cost you more than you can pay. 
Here's what I'll say to you today. Come on, we've got to slow down. We've got to slow down. So, social media doesn't help us, man. It's like keeping up with the Joneses. It's amazing. Social media is everyone else's highlight reel. You don't see the drop catches. You just see the perfect mess. Happy families, everything is good. You don't see all the fights and the screaming and the broken things. And Why? Because people don't want to show that. And we're so pressured by that. And we say, man, I want that and I want it now. And we, we go after all these things now, 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 now. And here's where we get. We get to a place of entitlement. And we begin to say, well, now I deserve it. It's mine. I, I need to have it. Years ago, I saw this and I've never forgot it. It said these words. It said, pay now and you can play later. But if you play now, you're going to pay later. And that's so true in our lives. We've got to pay right now. We've got to work hard. We've got to do. Then we can retire and enjoy those things. But we can't just play around now. Because if we do, we're going to end up paying later. And that's your decision. But that's how many people are. They just want it now. They want to have a job at $50 an hour. They want to start off there. They want it now, now, now. Luke 15 and verse 13 And it says, he set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. He squandered his wealth. You know, in America, in one year, last year, America spent $240 billion gambling in one year. $240 billion, with a B, dollars. For what? A chance that's so small that they would win but tricked into thinking, squandering all that money and wealth with the hope, that carrot on the end of the stick, that maybe I'll get something out of it. Come on, squandering can look different for each and every one of us, but it's there. I see people all the time come up to me and say, Pastor, I've got no money, and they've got one of those big Circle K drinks, big gulps in their hand. Well, where'd you get the money for that? Come on, they come up to you and say, man, I've got no money for doing this. And then their phone goes off and it's all these special ringtones. You know, they've probably paid for those. They're going home to watch some Netflix. Come on, they've got ESPN Plus. They've got Disney Plus. They've got extended cable. They've got the sports packages. Come on, they're smoking. Come on, do you get the picture? Do you see what's happening in our life? And we justify it by saying, well, that's only $3.99 a month. It's not costing me much. One thing I've realized is this. It's not the purchases of 50 and above that's our problem. It's the purchases of five below. Because we don't think about those things. We just do them. But we don't realize those things multiply. And they should soon add up. I remember being a kid and I went somewhere and I had like 100 pounds. That's what we call it in England. I know it dollars over here. 100 pounds back when I was a kid was about $200. And man, I thought I was the richest kid on the face of the earth. And we were on vacation and we were doing things and I would buy this and I would buy that. And at the end of the day, every night I would count what money I had left in my pocket. And I would go through all my money and I would look at it and I would count it again and I would look at it. And every night I was convinced of something. I thought someone had robbed me. Come on, I thought I'd maybe lost a 20 here or there. Why? Because I'm like, man, there's less here than I really thought. That's how life many times is. There's a lot less than perhaps we think. Why? Because we just squander things. So here's the third thing. Come on, our lives are stressed out when we engage in self-destructive behavior. Come on, you've got to be careful. Every one of us, it's a little at a time. But it's the small rocks that will get in your shoes. And we've got to be careful because it's a dollar here or that. And we've got to watch that we're not squandering away our life. Luke 15, 14. And after he had spent... Everything, everything, everything. You know why our lives are stressed out? Is when we come to a place that we are spending everything that we have. And the problem is we don't just stop at what we have. We go to the more part too. And we get ourselves in such debt. And this isn't just a money problem. It's also a time issue. Come on, it maybe takes 30 minutes to get somewhere. What are we doing? We're leaving with 25 minutes and hoping we we can find magically that five extra minutes. We're doing that. Oh, we're giving everything to the last minute that we have. And that's why we get in debt and we begin to lose. You know, the average credit card in America is $16,000. And the average American has three of them. That's unbelievable to think that we are spending everything that we have. Luke 15, 14, it says, After he spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. Here's my last point. 
of this part of the message. Our lives are stressed out when we are unprepared for the storms that come. Storms are coming in our life. I wonder how different we would have been if we would have known what was going to take place over these past two months. And for many of you losing jobs and financial struggles and problems, I wonder what we would have done. Unfortunately, some of you, even knowing that, wouldn't have even changed because you were like, oh man, that's not really going to happen. I'll, I'll make it through somehow. What do we know? The Bible says it definitely rains on the just and the unjust. But back to the story in verse 17. And this is the turning point. After finding himself in a pig pen, it says these words, when he came to his senses. My God, I pray if this is all you hear in this message today, it would be this. You've got to come to your senses. You can't keep living like that. You can't keep living for now and, and wanting more and living on the edge and spending everything. You cannot do that and be successful in life. There has to be a turning point in our life and it has to be this. It has to be when we come to our senses. What does that mean? When he woke up to his situations and he realized there's something I need to do. Oh, we're quick to blame everyone else. But coming to our senses means I've got to realize what I'm responsible for and what I'm doing. And he said these words, how many of my father's hired servants have food enough to spare? That means more than enough. And here I am starving to death. I will set out and I will go back to my father. I love this. He came to his senses. And what did he remember? The father. He remembered the Father's house. He remembered the answer is still the Father. It always has been, but so often we're blinded to the truth and we, till we find ourselves in a pig pen. And even then, for some of us, we're still so full of pride to admit it's our fault and we won't even come home. Look at this scripture speaking of Jesus, the foretelling of Jesus that we see in Isaiah centuries before he would be born. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government, the rule will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I love those words there, Prince of Peace. That words are Shah Shalom, Prince of Peace. The prince part, Shah, means this, Lord, Chief, General. For many of us, a prince is someone who just looks pretty. But that's not what prince is. That's not what God is. He wants to be the Lord, the Chief. He wants to be the General. He's the one in charge. We don't want that. We don't like that many times. Hello? Did you realize in the Bible, it says, Lord, 7,800 times. But you know, it only says Savior 36. We need a Savior, but we've also got to have a Lord. Here's something we've got to understand about salvation. Are you ready? Salvation isn't just about a Savior. Salvation is also that you need to have a Lord in your life. There has to be Lordship. You need to give your life over to Christ. You can't keep living in control of your life. You've got to surrender that over to God. And it says he's the prince, the Shah Shalom. Shalom means what? It means tranquility, rest, wholeness, completeness, contentment. Put them together. When God's in control, there'll be rest, there'll be peace, there'll be wholeness. There'll be completeness in your life. But yet we convince ourselves other than that. There used to be a bumper sticker in cars many years ago that said these words. N-O Jesus. N-O-Peace, K-N-O-W, Jesus, K-N-O-W, Peace. When Jesus is not there, there's no peace. But when you know Jesus and you have Jesus, come on, you have peace in your life. I hope you're hearing me today. I hope you're responding because I'm preaching probably better than you're responding right now. Come on, in the Bible, lordship and peace so many times are connected together. You can see it in Psalms 29, 11, Acts 10, 36, Romans 5, 1. And here in Psalms 4, verse 8, it says, In peace I will lay down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Come on, there's peace when you're Lord. Come on, I will be in peace when you're the Lord of my, my life. Let's put it this way. You ready? Your way, no peace. His way, 
peace. Okay, pastor, so you've identified again the problem. We know that. Give us the solution. Well, here it is. Are you ready? How can I get the stress out of my finances? By applying principles to your life. A principle is a foundational truth upon which other truths depend. They rely on these. And I want to speak, I, I want to spell out your stressful life right now. Here it is. Look at it. You can sum it up in one statement. Most of the stress of your life is coming from you ignoring the principles of God in your life. Look at it. Look at it. You're ignoring what God's word says you need to do. So I'm going to give you six principles right now that will bring financial peace, I truly believe, to each and every one of your life. And they're so simple. And I'm glad that the gospel is simple because that means even I can understand and do it. Number one, obedience. Obedience. This has to be the baseline. You've got to be obedient to follow God's way. And you know, when we talk about obedience, when it comes to finance, you know what we're going to talk about? The tithe. Tithing, bringing to God, giving God the first fruits of your life, bringing to the storehouse that which belongs to God. Even as a church, we do this. We know the importance of tithing. Every month as a church, we tithe out of everything that we get. Why? Because we don't want the blessing to stop at us. We want the blessing to flow through us. And you may say, oh, here we go. You're just talking for your own gain. No, I'm not talking. Listen, tithing's not for my gain. Tithing's for your gain. If you'll be obedient in this, God says, I'll open the windows of heaven, the floodgates. Look at it, what it says, Malachi 3, 7 through 12. It says, ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and you have not kept them. What a picture of many of us today. We've turned away from his laws and his instruction. God said, would you return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will mere mortal men rob God? Yet God says, you have robbed me. And you may ask, how are we robbing you? How are we robbing God? Do you know why we're robbing God? Because it all belongs to him. He says, you're robbing me in the tithes and offerings. And as a result, you're under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and test me in this. In other words, try it for yourself. I have a testimony in this because I'm a tither. I've put God to the test and every time he's come through for me. God says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open for you the floodgates of heaven to pour out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines of your field will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed. For yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord God Almighty. It works. I said it works. Tithing and giving to God works. But unfortunately, many of us are so strapped today and we've convinced ourselves I can't afford to tithe. Listen, you can't afford not to tithe. We need the blessing of God in our finances, upon our lives. And that blessing comes through being obedient and putting God first with our tithe. A tenth given to God. 90% goes a whole lot further than 100%. 90% blessed as we give to God first goes a whole lot further than us holding on to everything else. Second principle, contentment. We can spell contentment really like gratitude. Being happy with what I have. Being thankful. But that's not us today. We want more and more. We're driven by more. We're not thankful for what we do have. 1 Timothy 6, 6 and 10 says this. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Are we? No. Those who want to get rich will fall into temptation and into a trap, into many foolish and harmful desires, and they will plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money. It doesn't say money's the problem. It's the love of it. It's when money has you. It's the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eagerly for money have wandered away from the faith, and they have pierced themselves with many griefs. Come on, contentment in our life. When's the last time you say, God, I'm so thankful for what you've given me. 
But instead, we keep saying, God, if you could just give me that, and if I could just have that. Come on, we've got to throw our hands in the air and say, God, I'm thankful because I'm telling you, a thankful heart produces a double portion. As we're thankful, God can then say, okay, now I can trust you with more. Number three, margin. Margin, so important to live with space to breathe. Margin is literally the space between yourself and and the limit of your life. And many of us don't even have any space there. They're touching each other. There's no margin. There's no error. Man, if we miss a day's work, we're losing our car. If we, we just have no margin that we've created in our life. And it's so important that we don't spend it all. Because there's a peace that can come when we have some pattern, we have some security, we have something left over. Proverbs 21 and verse 20 says, The wise have wealth and security. But the fool spends everything they get. Which one are you, wise or foolish? The wise what? They have wealth and and they use it wisely. But the fools spend everything they get. Come on, we've got to simplify our life. Really, that's been done for us over the last few months. Just so many things have been stripped away from us that really we thought we couldn't live without, but we're doing pretty good. And I think a simple life is the greatest life. We don't need those things. I'll say this. I don't think we need those things till we can afford to pay for them, to charge those. And and that's not affording them. That's putting yourself in a problem. Save up. Wait. Create that margin that there's room. So if the dishwasher breaks, you've got some room. If the air conditioning goes out, come on, you don't have to be selling your plasma to try and get the next payment for you. Come on, I'm preaching louder than you're responding today. You may say, well, I really need those things. But I'm telling you, even when you can afford those, many times you'll look and say, you know what? I don't think I really need those. I know it's like with our kids. They'll say, Dad, can you get me that? Well, you've got some money. Oh, I don't need that anymore. Come on, create a margin within your life. Number four, these are pillars of principles to help you get the stress out of your finance. Generosity. Generosity. Have a generous heart. One thing I've realized about generosity, I don't believe it's an action or an amount. I believe it's who we are. It's an attitude. It's a characteristic that we need to have. I'm going to go and say this. Are you ready? I believe we can be generous with nothing. Because there was a lady with two little coins who had nothing in everyone's eyes. And Jesus says she's given more than anyone else. The generosity that we need to have in our lives. And see, see, we get so strapped and we get so behind. We can't be generous. We can't give because we've got all these other things that are sucking us dry. Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will be watered himself. Man, I love that. I want to be generous. I want to have a heart of generosity. And for some of you, you can't. You have no margin. There's no obedience in your life. You're not tithing. You're not, you're not doing all these things. There's not contentment. And as a result, you cannot be generous with those things. Almost done today. Number five, integrity. Well, that's almost a curse word now. Integrity. Hardly anyone today has integrity today. <laughs> Jesus is watching you if that helps. You can think, oh, he didn't see that or they didn't see that. I'm just going to fudge my expense report. I'm just going to do this. Oh, I'm going to act like my kids are are under 12 and they're really 18. Get some free food. All these little things and we can justify it all. But we've got to have an integrity. Come on, I'm I'm just going to get on to you because someone told me this again the other day. They sent me an article and they reminded me of this. You know what integrity is? Putting your shopping cart back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really said that. Drives me crazy. People are so lazy, can't put their shopping cart back. God just created that space so you can get some exercise. Come on, have integrity in your life. It's doing the small things that shows that you have integrity in your life. Proverbs 20, 23 says, The Lord detests double standards. He is not pleased by a dishonest scale. They would rig the scales so they would get more than they should have had. And so many times in our lives, if we don't watch, the same thing can happen. Number six, dependence. Dependence. We live in a world where everyone wants to be independent. John 16 and 24 says, Until now, Jesus says, you have not asked for anything in my name. 
He said, ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Isn't that a picture of many times in our life we become so dependent and we're not even asking Jesus for anything anymore. And he says, if you would just ask from me, I can give. There's a joy that can come through me providing for you. You have not asked. Come on, you want to be independent and doing it on your own. It's okay to be independent as a nation. It works. It's not a bad thing there, but it's bad when you're an individual. You want to be separated and isolated when you were made to be joined together. I've got to end this message today. I hope in your groups you're going to be able to discuss these things because there's some great points. Let me go back to the story. Almost done. Luke chapter 15, 18 and 20. A young man says, I will set out and go back to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. The answer every time is coming back to the father. It's surrendering again to his lordship, saying, God, I've tried it financially and every year I've tried it all on my own. But God, it's coming back to your principles, to your way, to doing things right. Because that's the only way we're going to have success in our life. Look at me today. Your problems didn't happen overnight. But your solution can begin today. And you've got to keep doing it and being consistent with it. And keep working it. Come on, it will work. you just got to keep on doing it and keep on going. It says, while he was a long way off, he was filled with compassion. He ran to him. And kissed him. I love this statement. God does not fuss at you for what you've done to yourself. (laughs) Aren't you glad that God didn't say, boy, look at you. You you stink. He ran and threw his arms around him and he kissed him and put a robe and a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. He reinstated him. God doesn't fuss of what you've done to yourself because he knows he's the answer. All you've got to do is come back to him. Run to the Father today. So what do we do? We've got to be obedient. I I, I believe this. If we can't get through paying our tithes, we're not going to see any of these other things come to pass in our life. Because we've got to be obedient. We've got to live with contentment. We've got to have margin. We've got to have generosity, integrity. We've got to be dependent upon Him. Bow your heads wherever you're at. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now that even... Many of us right now feel so isolated and separated from you. But God, I thank you right now that you're ready to run to us, to put your arms around us, to kiss us and embrace us. I thank you today, no matter how distant we may think we are, God, it just takes a prayer. You're just one prayer away. And all it takes is for me to move towards you because you're not the one that moved. I'm the one that moved. But God, I come back to you right now. Surrender everything to you. I wonder if as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, wherever you're at. God's speaking to you right now. But pastor, you talked about finance. Yeah, it's still the gospel. And there's a message that we need to see, that we need to come back to Father. Some of you right now think there's no way that He would ever love me again. Oh my goodness, you are so wrong. He's looking out for you, ready to run, to embrace you and to put His arms around you and to kiss you. But you've got to come to your senses and come home. You've got to realize there's something I have to do right now. Would you do that right now? Would you say yes to Jesus? They're going to pray with you wherever you're at. Come on, say these words, dear Heavenly Father. I admit right now that I'm a sinner. I believe in my heart that you're my Savior. And God, I confess you right now with my mouth and say that you're my Lord and Savior. Dear Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender everything to you. Change me. Make me anew. Make me anew. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.
Wherever you're at, if you prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you. Just email us at ec at encounterchurch.today. We'd love just to celebrate with you, help you. If you need a Bible, we have those. We want to connect you into a family because you don't need to do life alone. But let me say this. We're going to go into worship in a second. But just before we do that, I know there's people right now, you're stressed to the max financially. You, you don't know how you're going to make it. I'm telling you, begin to apply these six principles, these six words. Put them up on your mirror. Put them somewhere in your car. Put them on your refrigerator. And every day, look down that and say, man, am I being obedient to God? Is there contentment in my life? Is there generosity? Come on, is there integrity? Begin to apply those things to your life. And I'm telling you, your life will be turned around because God's principles, God's word works when it's applied. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone right now whatever the struggle may be, financially, whatever they're facing, God, I thank you. God, your word has the answer. There's so much in your word about finance. Why? Because you knew this would be such a burden, a massive thing for us. And God, we look to you right now. We ask you, God, we lean into you right now. And we say, Holy Spirit, would you change us, help us, Help us to be obedient. Help us to be contented. Help us to have generosity. Help us to have integrity in our lives. Come on, help us to have complete dependency upon you. Help us to create margin in our lives. God, help us, God, we pray. Help us, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. So beautiful. So kind and lovely. Isn't he? Isn't he beyond compare? Treasure it, generous, marvelous and holy. Isn't he? Isn't he so wonderful? So beautiful? So kind and lovely. Isn't he, isn't he beyond compare, treasure and generous, marvelous and holy, isn't he? Isn't he, 
Isn't he? Isn't he God? The one who can do everything. God, we look to you right now. We pray your head, your protection to be around each and every one of our homes and families. Keep all sickness and disease from us. And until we can meet again in person, God, I thank you for the opportunities that we have just to be the church, to reach out. Because church isn't just about a building. It's about a people that realize we've got a mission. We've got a purpose. And we're going to reach out as many people. The dark of the night means the bright of the light. We're not cursing the darkness. We're lighting a candle of hope and we're bringing hope to the world. And God, I pray this week, use us, use our church, use each and every one of us to touch people and make a difference, God. Right now, we pray. Wow, we love you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Just feel the love of God and just know that you're part of a family. And just know what that means for your life. You don't have to be alone. We're there to help you and pray with you and support you. Get connected and involved. All the information's on the screen. We love you. Have an incredible week. God bless. Bye. 